So, a lot of you know me from other story slams, and if you see me, you know that what I do for a living is a little unique. I am a professional private investigator. And what you may not know is that I had the largest and only all-female agency in the United States at one point in time. <laughs> and we were dynamic, which might explain why for 10 years I was a closet transvestite. I used to... Um, I used to pull on my pants and my heavy black boots, put on my jacket and my big black belt, put on my hat, pick up my Santa Claus bag, throw it over my shoulder, oh, and go to my kids' <laughs> toys. Because we supported an orphanage in Camden, and every year my girls would each pick the name of a child and they would wrap up the present for the kid, and I would take it in. Now, I wasn't always Santa, but when you're an all-female agency, somebody's got to be selected, so I became Santa. And I loved it. Actually, you know, Santa Claus is a job that was made for a woman. I don't know if you knew that or not, but really, think about this. They put big men who are not comfortable with children into this garb, <laughs> and they sit them on a chair and tell the kids to sit on their laps. Not comfortable. You know, shades of pedophilia, it is not good. But when I put on the heavy eyebrows, the heavy beard, the gloves, and I walk in carrying a bag of gifts, nobody knows what my gender is. Nobody cares. These kids are three and four and five years old. They used to use Santa Claus. And when I sit down, I don't sit down in a chair. I sit down on the floor. I'm right down there with them. And they can crawl all over me. And it's great. And they can touch my beard. And the sweetest thing happened. One little boy came up behind me. And he was my height because I was sitting. And he played with my hair. And he leaned in. And he said, Santa, could you bring me a mommy? Oh, and I, my heart melted. And and I realized at that moment that I was destined to be Santa Claus. This was really important in my life. So every year, I would collect the, the gifts in the suburbs, fill up my car, and head into Camden. Now, if you don't know a lot about Camden, there are parts of Camden that make North Philadelphia look like a spot, right? It's not beautiful. And I had to drive down an area between the Dominican drug sellers and the El Salvadoran drug sellers, and often they were shooting at each other. And I was a little uncomfortable until I realized, wait a minute, I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> I can do anything. <laughs> I'm driving, and the gifts are there, and I see the drug dealers, and all of a sudden, they're waving at me. <laughs> oh, because I'm sad. <laughs> and it was so beautiful. These hardened guys with tattoos all over their faces and teardrops coming out of their eyes that were tattooed on. <laughs> and they're waving at me with wonder. And after a while, I wasn't sure whether I got more pleasure out of the children or the former children. <laughs> And so I used to, to make little packages <laughs> gifts. And when I went through the hood, I would slow down. And as they waved, I would roll down my windows. And I would give out my little baggies. Now, it wasn't the same baggies they were giving me. <laughs> Although somebody did try to swap me one. And it was kind of, well, no, I didn't. I, didn't. I, would, I would do that. That's not who I am. Um, but it was wonderful. And, and for me, the Christmas spirit for this Jewish lady dressed up as Santa Claus <laughs> was knowing that I had an impact not only on these little children, but on these men who were finally able to bring some home into the hood. Yeah. Thank you.